Hello there, beautiful souls and beautiful humans. How are you doing? Rosanna Rosie Bohannis here with an update on what I would call the Atlantis Chronicles, because all of this beautiful information is coming through presently as I'm preparing to run a retreat in Santorini, uh, the beautiful island of Santorini, which Atlantis is said to have been, um, how do I put it? The, the landmass that was Atlantis is said to have existed around where Santorini is. And obviously there are other stories in other places like the zoos and other places uh, and so on. And I'm not going to get into the details other than to say um, <laughs> the landmass broke. <laughs> and um, ultimately there are fragments in various places. And I'm just here to bring through the Paradise Earth Codes and the Divine Mastery Codes that are the Master Teacher Codes of Atlantis. And I know there are many of us at the moment that have come to this Earth to remember, to bring back to ourselves the memory of our time at this beautiful, beautiful time in history or her story on this beautiful planet. And to remind humanity that the way we have been told history has occurred isn't necessarily the way it has been. In fact, we know that history has been tampered with time immemorial and uh, so much has been hidden from us. And despite that, the truth is like the water that seeps through the cracks of the apparent wall that seems insurmountable, seems impossible to break down, except it isn't. It's an illusionary wall, just like well, all the things that are a construct of being in a physical reality. It's all temporal and we're here to remember our eternal nature. So welcome to me. If you don't know me, I am a multidimensional success coach. I work as a soul empath um, to awaken star seeds. I am a galactic psychic and intuitive, and essentially I am a spokesperson for the Intergalactic Super Federation through the star peace codes that have come through me. Uh, these got activated back on the 31st of October 2020 when we were in the thick of a huge fear pandemic. And um, I was given a very direct message that my mission had shifted. It was time now to bring these star peace codes to humanity, to awaken them in each of us who are ready to hear this message that in our universe, in fact, the war is completely over. It's already done. Peace has been restored in our universe and we are receiving the transmission of these codes to this planet because we have been promised a thousand years of peace. And if we fancy more than that, we can have another 10,000 if we want them and then we can see where we're at. So this is where what has been written in various um, religious texts and what has been passed down, even if it has got very distorted, there is a grain of truth. So when I say how is Atlantis, Christ, ETs and the crystalline grid all one, that's what I'm going to unpack today in a very short period of time. And I'm doing this ahead of the eclipse, which is a hybrid eclipse. It's uh, between an annular and a, a total eclipse on um, Wednesday, so in two days time the 19th of April. This is a new moon in Aries, so it's a solar eclipse, and oh my, this is the start of something incredibly powerful. In fact, it's already started because, you know, with the equinox, we started to bring these energies in, and then we had the Easter weekend, and all these beautiful Christ codes started to come through, and I got the impulse to run this retreat in Santorini back in January, so I'm fascinated by the fact that very well-known people are starting to talk about Atlantis, including Russell Brand, um, and bringing this conversation to light presently because, you know, these, let's just say that it is a now moment. We're all constructing our own reality. We are all part of the divine plan because we are part of the divine. We are the divine and waking up to this involves us moving beyond the blasphemous con concepts and the idea that somehow um, we're wrong to even have these conversations. So if anyone is offended by what I say, Sorry about that. Um, look within and maybe consider what you are actually um, buying into and how that's serving you and how it's serving humanity, because all of us have one mission presently, and that is to move beyond a duality into oneness. Um, and this doesn't mean that we are all the same except that we recognize we do all have the capacity to align with love with the highest good of all and the win 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 and as a result of that also absolutely celebrate our unique individuality just like we're each individual snowflakes or um drops in the ocean of love and that's where i'm going to start so um 
if you're watching this on YouTube, because I will share this on YouTube too, please do subscribe, please do hit the notifications tab and please do also hit the all videos um, uh, button because ultimately what you're doing when you do this is you're subscribing to Grace, you're subscribing to the idea that you and I, we are all co-creators of our reality and we get to shape reality into a vision of Paradise Earth, which is what Atlantis once was before the fall, before, um, if you like, the the beauty and the potential of humanity at the time or whatever we were as a kind of hybrid human ET construct uh, got, got uh, what's the word, mm, polluted, got distorted. And I'll go into the ET bit in a second, but you know, in order for us to know ourselves, in order for us to truly come back into unity with the divine, it is so important that we recognize we have to meet our shadow, we have to know our opposite in order to fully integrate. And that is all part of the story. So when you take a step back and a step up and you look at everything from a bird's eye view and you keep a real healthy sense of humor, <laughs> you see that this is all part of the game of life, the, the game of reunifying with the divine. So let me just bring this through because there's so much that wants to come through. I have a piece of celestial. I have a piece of selenite. And I also have a piece of, qu of quartz. And it was only today that I saw in this quartz that there is um, a record keeper in here. Beautiful little rainbow record keeper right inside. And this is one of my mum's crystals. Now, my mum was an Atlantean teacher. Um, I'm an Atlantean teacher. Christ was an Atlantean teacher. So without further ado, let's get into this. And again, let me just remind you, please, to tune in here in the Star Peace Facebook group. So if you're on YouTube, you'll need to um, go and join the Star Peace Facebook group, which is called Manifesting Star Peace Utopia, uh, to join me live for the new moon activation, the, um, what I call it, the hybrid uh, eclipse activation for moving out of your 3D uh, blocks and actually allowing yourself to access the 4D bridge into your 5D destiny because we're all here to do that now. Timelines have shifted. There's so much that's collapsed. The uh, enslavement grid is down. And yet we have to recognize the similarities in terms of where we are now in the world and the fact that we're facing yet again um, the folly of the human. <laughs> and by that, I mean the uh, massive growth in um, artificial intelligence, the fact that we've got to the point that we can destroy ourselves many times over with the technology that we have created. And, you know, we're facing again the potential of cataclysmic event of our own doing. Uh, whereas it is said that uh, I believe, well, Noah's Ark and the whole story around Noah's Ark was that um, God needed to start again that actually um, the whole event with the flood that led to Noah's Ark and to Noah giving all beings the opportunity to be saved if they went along the ark, on the ark. And this is important because it's a very important element for us to discuss as humans as to how we're going to choose to move forward. But essentially, it was an act of God, the wrath of God that decided that um, the planet needed to basically start again. And I'm seeing that there are some very strong connections between the Atlantean era and how actually the cataclysm, the fall of the Atlantean era, the fall that came as a result of Eve eating, apparently, of the apple of the apple from the tree of knowledge. And of course, Noah's story and where we are today, all very much the same thing. And if we look at, thing, at, at our lives from the perspective of um, a multidimensional perspective, and we accept that everything is happening in this now moment, we might be looking back in history, we might be looking forward in future times, but actually everything is coexisting now, parallel lifetimes, um, alternative lifetimes, if you like, alternative universes, but it's all happening here. So if we can grasp what I'm saying on whatever level, then we're going to have a lot of fun in this conversation. Now, it's quite interesting that I'm finding it hard to speak my words. So I'm just going to call in my higher self to, yeah, I'm just calling in to be a pure channel of all that has been coming through. And what I do want to say is that from my perspective, anything that I do share with you has come directly through my own guidance. A lot of the times I get this guidance through dream states. Now, of course, 
my subconscious may have picked it up. I might have heard it from other places for sure. But if I know I've heard it from somewhere else first, I will always say it. I'll always quote who I heard it from. Uh, to me, that is really important to share the sources that I receive information from. But if I haven't heard it before and I'm saying something and you've heard it somewhere else, please do share in the comments where you've heard it, because I feel that's one of the most phenomenal aspects of us actually um, receiving information that we know is in the collective, is in the field and allows us to trust our own inner counsel because that's what we're needing to do. So let's actually get directly to what I was going to talk about. So how does what we are facing in the world today relate to the fall of Atlantis and the existence of Christ? Now, this started to come through over the Easter weekend. And um, as I was preparing, getting more and more excited about the retreat in Santorini, which is it's called the Divine Human Integration Retreat, and it's about activating the Paradise Earth Codes in ourselves and in the land that we've been called to. And I, I've been told this is one of my roles presently is to go to places I'm invited to, I'm called to, to go and reactivate the Paradise Earth Codes. Now, Paradise is a concept that's in the Bible. Uh, the time of Atlantis was said to be a time of tremendous growth uh, on this planet. Prior to that, I understand Lemuria was prior to Atlantis. There was this beautiful sense of real balance between humanity and nature. And then um, technology was developed. Technology was brought in from different extraterrestrial races. And for a time, it was an exciting time of growth before basically, if you like, do I want to say the dark forces took over? Bas basically, the, the curiosity of seeking to dominate, seeking to separate from source and to allow our um, own curiosity beyond a connection to the divine to take over. So what could we achieve on our own without being guided by our higher selves took over? And this was when, if you like, humanity, well, the, the beings on this planet, there's something in me saying, not even to call it humanity, but the beings on this planet at the time kind of got arrogant and got um, too interested in what they could achieve on their own without really considering the impact of what they were creating on future generations, on the planet, on even the universe, you know, our, our solar system, our galaxy and the universe. And this led to this huge downfall. Now, what we're facing in the world today is very similar, isn't it? There are lots and lots of people who are very concerned about the, the direction that technology is going in. Uh, the fact that we're, it's not that we're very close to, we've already been able to create, um, if you like, artificial humans, if you want, you know, robots for want of a better word that kind of look like humans and artificial intelligence can in the end become, well, its own, it can take its own life if you like it can it can take its own um direction and there have been lots and lots of things that have been created including a series in um on tv it was on netflix i saw called i think humans and it was about um these ai doll ai helpers in the house that then kind of um awoken if you like to themselves and decided they didn't want to be subservient to humanity and this started a whole rogue movement and i say this because it's all us, you know, it's all us facing our shadow and what we're actually creating and the need to take responsibility. But back in the Atlantean times, there were many master teachers that had arrived, this is what I understand, from different extraterrestrial races that had come to this earth as a planet of choice, a planet of free will, to impart the most phenomenal teachings from, well, all around the galaxies and the universe in terms of spiritual um unity spiritual oneness spiritual how would i what's the word that's coming through the power of love the way that love can heal and of course the antithesis existed at the same time which was the antithesis of love and how one can destroy how one can create the opposite of all things that are aligned with love and what i wanted to say about the ets in this world and what we believe about ets is we are the ets we are the hybrids we are the acupuncture needles that depending on our own vibrational set point attract the influence of those in the non-physical realm as we understand it that are either of nefarious intent or loving intent so whether you call them demons or angels that's up to you but ultimately you know there'll be those that exist that are of, of, of intelligence, if you like, intelligent life in our universe, in our galaxy, in our solar system, that 
uh, play on our own vibrational set point. And as a result of that, we're utilized. We're all pawns in the game of life, if you like, for want of a better word, where we're either being um, manipulated, if you like, to create the fuel that those particular ETs feed off. So if it's anger, if it's fear, if it's uh, greed, frustration, I'm sure many of you have seen Monsters, Inc. And I think it's said it very, very well. Um, and of course, there are those other beings in our cosmos that feed off love, that feed off uh, harmony, that feed off uh, unity, oneness and peace, peace being a dynamic state. And so every one of us gets to choose our own vibration. And until we choose it, we are basically programmed to a particular vibration. So everyone has to unplug from that program and choose consciously what we want for ourselves. Now, in terms of Atlantis and in terms of Christ, in terms of the crystalline grid, because this is what it really comes down to, Christ was a master teacher, um, an Atlantean master teacher. I know that we, when we look at various um, teachings, if you like, around the different sages or the different spiritual teachers that have existed in time, including Ra and Thor, Thoth, and the reincarnation of these highly evolved beings. From what I understand, Isis and Osiris, uh, I'm trying to think where I actually got this from. It was a, a book of cards. Um, yeah, it was the Starseed deck of cards. But Osiris came from Orion. And Isis came from Sirius, and between them, they created humanity. This is something that has been said, it's not by me, but I, I felt I resonated with that. And there have been various incarnations of these master teachers, if you like, throughout time. When it came to Atlantis, Christ existed, as I said, as a master teacher who had evolved from many different uh, races, extraterrestrial races, and had come to impart the, the teachings that came from unconditional love, that came from um, basically being the being that was closest, if you like, to the divine in terms of frequency. Now, what this means to me, as I understand it, is that if he is said to have walked this earth as the human that had, that was most like the creator God that is the God of our universe was made in, in the image as we all are of the divine of God, all that is source, all that is. Then basically he carried as a way of looking at it more of his soul light of the source light, all that is than any other human who'd ever walked this earth. So he had more light love in his cellular structure, his DNA, all layers of his physical being than average humans. And I remember reading a book by Barbara Marciniak, and I can't remember whether it was the Pleiadian Agenda or if it was Bringers of the Dawn, but it was, it was a book from around that era that said that Christ was actually an extraterrestrial, that he had come to this earth um, to bring this message of unconditional love as the healer of all that is to this earth to support humanity, to support the planet. But we're going right back now at least 10,000 years before Christ was said to have been born. And we're going back to the fact that at the time of Atlantis, when he came in, he was holding essentially the frequency dynamics of all of the extraterrestrial races that were of the light, were of the source, all that is in its unified, harmonious, symphonic form. And Yes, there was the antithesis of this that came about that had the opposite intention. And this is all part of understanding that the universe and the divine understanding itself, knowing the shadow of what it once was or what it is in its unified self. And so all that came about as the opposite came about. And then we ended up with all of the stories of duality we know and ultimately the experience of the patriarchal era that we've all been living through. Now, holding this light, there are, there are apparently three different, three main theories around Christ. And I did just watch a video today uh, that Elizabeth April had made about um, Christ and God 
and you can check out her channel about that. It's done very recently. I think it was Easter Monday. And she was talking about those different theories and that's great. This is not why I felt the need to make this video. It's more for us to understand that, although I do understand that um, Christ as we, as we know him, as Jesus, the man that walked this earth is the main story for current humanity. For us to really get to a point before the trauma, because if we look at what we understand now scientifically, that um, it is said that traumatic events can be passed on through our DNA for up to 14 generations. These are studies that have been done on lab rats from what I can understand, but it has been passed on and shown that 14 generations or so can pass on uh, some form of trauma and that, you know, the DNA expresses itself according to that. And you want to look into the field of epigenetics if you haven't yet, because there's some really beautiful things to unpack there. But essentially, if we want to create peace on this planet, if we want to take the message that Christ brought to the earth a couple of thousand years ago, just to see if humanity was ready. I'll come back to that in a sec. We have to go way back. All right. So our bloodlines do carry trauma from one generation to the next, but they also carry the codes prior to that trauma, right? So if we want to reset the baseline of humanity of the existence of the, on this planet, if we want to support this planet's ascension into fourth density, but basically 5D frequency humanity, then we must remember the frequency codes of before the fall of Atlantis, not before um, the, the last 2000 years. It's got to go way, way back to before the era of patriarchy. And anything I'm saying that resonates, you start to get goosebumps, you know that this is activating what you need to in yourself, right? So basically, we're here to remember Christ came as an embodiment of these healing codes back in the time of Atlantis. I don't know what he was called then, but he was a master teacher. And there were many of us who were learning with him at the time who are also master teachers in our own right. And we have come back at this time to remember this. Now, imagine that there were many of us that could see what was happening at the time of Atlantis. We could see the way things were going and we knew that ultimately there was going to be a big destruction. It was prophesied. It was going to happen. And we didn't feel like we needed to be saved or to save ourselves because we understood the non-physical uh, nature of reality and we knew that we would continue to exist. So we were not attached to our physical form but what we did do because we knew it was going to be important for the continuation of this planet and also the balance in our um, solar system and, and galaxy and therefore universe for this planet to ultimately free itself from the enslavement grid that was being basically created as a result of the tech at the time of Atlantis we put all of our knowledge, all of our wisdom, all of our mastery into the physical realm of the mineral kingdom. We put it into the crystals, the codes of the the codes of our paradise earth reality, the time when we were in harmony, in balance, before the fall, before we got out of alignment, are all in these various crystals. And we unlock them when we are ready. So anyone who has an affinity with crystals, that's because on some level you are remembering to harmonize your human self with what you once knew to reactivate the light codes in your being, the love light codes in your being. And as a result of that, remember your soul mission, the part that you're here to play so that you can activate the puzzle piece that you are in the great puzzle of existence that is this beautiful tapestry of life called Paradise Earth and um, this particular beautiful expression of humanity in its divine human form because everything's coexisting just as I'm talking about one possible reality there's an Armageddon reality coexisting it's another timeline it's a parallel timeline it's a parallel reality but we're choosing to activate the one I'm talking about now if you're liking the sound of it then please do comment please do hit the like button please do subscribe as I said because it's a game all right we're meant to have fun with this and it's like how do you prove that what you're saying is true I'm, I can't you know like as, as I change my view of the world, the world around me changes. Uh, perception is reality. As I reconnect to my power as a divine source, all that is to co-create my experience, I'll see more and more evidence of it, just like you will. So all of us are living in a simulation, for want of a better word. And the question is, what simulation do you want to create? So I'm here to inspire that vision in you of what is possible so that you can decide the part that you want to play 
and the part you chose for yourself, should you choose to accept it, and also what is the version of reality that you want to see co-created in your physical realm whilst you're here in this physical skin suit, in this physical reality. So um, if we want to energize the timeline of mass destruction, go ahead. You're going to go and live that out somewhere, but let's not do it here. And if we want to accept that we are master teachers, that comes with us also recognizing the need to be humble, the, re the recognizing the need for us to remember that we have created all sorts of testing conditions for ourselves before we will actually fully reclaim our mastery as master teachers, because the abuse of power comes as no surprise and absolute power corrupts and, you know, all those stories. So basically what I've learned is this. For us to co-create our reality consciously and to not fall into the trappings of the Atlantean time. What is essential so we don't get caught up in our own stories and therefore think we're doing things on behalf of the great all that is, but actually we're just tripped out on our own power, is to have strong desire and then to um, surrender that desire to the highest good of all and the win-win-win, which means to let go of attachment to how things actually work out. And again, I'm going to move on, but I just want to whet your appetite for the fact that those of us who are heeding this call now are ready to really reclaim our power as co-creators of reality and to teach by example. We're not forcing anyone else to do it. We're just showing how we create miracles in our own lives, how our own lives are so much more magical than those around us. And as a result, those around us might get interested and go, oh, I want some of what they've got. How do I access that? How do I do it? And that's when we can share how we got there. And it's an individual journey. The way I teach it will be different to how another spiritual teacher teaches it. And we're not here to heal others. We're here to be our own healers, to recognize the healing comes from within, to recognize we don't even need healing, but we do need rebalancing. OK, we're here to remind ourselves of the essential truth and strip away that which is superfluous. So Christ was a master teacher at the time of Atlantis. He kind of holds the frequency of all of us master teachers that are here to create through love rather than fear. And uh, he decided, or the almighty all that is that he is a part of, decided that it would be worth testing whether humanity was ready to remember what they once knew back at the time of Atlantis about 2000 years ago. Um, and so I think of like the scout ants that come along first just to see if somewhere is a good place to then bring a whole ant colony and grow a whole ant colony. Well, he came along and lo and behold, discovered that humanity really wasn't ready for his messaging, or at least some of humanity was. But those of nefarious intent, those who had uh, basically bought into the enslavement grid and were hungry for power, were very keen to destroy him. And as a result of that, he was crucified. And in fact, the teachings we have are very much distorted. So who was Christ really? You know, was he born with halo light emanating from him because of his soul energy? Um, was he born remembering that he was the divine? I believe so. Intuitively, I believe so. This idea of being an immaculate conception is interesting. But what I've taken from that is that he was born into his bloodlines. So he was incarnated into the physical reality, but did not take on the karma, the bloodline karma drama stories that made him forget who he was. So when he was a baby, when he was a child, he remembered he was a son of the divine, just like we all are, the son of God, just like we all are. Now, somewhere along his own existence, he chose to buy into the myth because he wasn't very popular walking around going, hey, I'm a son of God. Uh, so are you, you can do what you, you can create miracles like I can, etc. So he shut it all down until he did go into the wilderness to remember and to basically come back into unity with the divine, remember his superpowers, right? And essentially back then, whatever was said about him, whatever his truth was, and I know there's quite a lot of beautiful things written. Uh, there's a book called The Ascends. There's, there's a lot, you know, the search of the Holy Grail. There's a, the truth has come through, through some, but it is very well hidden because, again, those who have been impulsing the planet and most of humanity to stay in this grid of fear for so long, um, to basically feed those in this universe that were the powers of darkness that no longer are in power, by the way, um, haven't wanted this uh, message of autonomy and sovereignty to truly come through. So as a result of that, um, 
basically he was crucified, right? So just remember that if you don't have a great love of Jesus Christ, if you don't resonate with Christianity, if you don't resonate with religion at all, that's fine because, you know, there's a lot of distortion in it. But from what I have understood from hearing others, um, many of the religions or religion as it, it came about was intended to help us to understand some, some concepts of the divine nature of source all that is but it has been distorted a bit like Chinese whispers and each of the layers of humans finite mind uh, to come to what we understand it to be today which is a very austere way of controlling mass populace through fear and through the idea that ultimately we will be punished um, for not being good beings and that is well me simplifying religion for you except for the more eastern elements now how do the Atlantean master teachers and the man said to be the greatest embodiment of the divine relate to the crystalline grid and the mineral kingdom? Well, I've already said the master teachings that we all had have been embedded into these beautiful things. How do you access them? Well, think of it. Christ crystalline, Christ within, crystalline codes within. This here, the rainbow flame, is all about repairing 12 strands of your DNA. And the rainbow flame initiation and activation, the energy field detox and the integration meditations came through me about four years ago now. And I, you know, recorded them uh, beautifully about a year ago. And they are a part of the teachings that I offer in my coaching programs. What they do is they repair your 12 strand DNA so that you can remember the crystalline codes within your own existence. Now, remember, I'm saying crystalline codes, master teacher codes. Uh, paradise earth codes are they all one and the same christ-like codes they're all different elements of strands of our divine human nature okay they're all different elements but you need your 12 strand dna to be activated 10 strands are crystalline two are the carbon base that we understand presently but when they're all activated that's when you start to get your superpowers which of course christ did have turning water into wine healing the sick um making more food from what was very little, you know, this was all in the realm of him basically having the faith of a grain of sand, right? Was, I think that's, that was the same. So ultimately, we can each create miracles in our own lives when we get let go of the how when we just focus on what it is that we actually want to create. I've made other videos about miracles, so I'm not going to get caught up there. But the crystalline grid is underneath us all, and it's very much related to mycelium, to the mycelium network that connects all living life on this planet. And of course, there's been this massive resurgence recently of fungi, um, the magic, magical fungi, and how um, we get to reconnect with our divine eternal nature through, um, well, the various fungi that is available to us all. And then there's also been the antithesis of this post the CVID era that you know about. Um, I know that recently there was this massive scare in the US of the A, which was all about this particular fun fungi that was very threatening uh, to those who had compromised immune systems because of all the things they'd taken to try and keep themselves safe and the, comp the, the compromised gut bacteria. And it was like a, a black fungi, if I remember correctly. So that which heals has the potential to harm, that which harm has the potential to heal. You, you get that we're moving beyond duality into oneness. If you're listening to me and you know what I'm talking about here, you're getting how we're kind of playing this game now on a whole new level. Now, the Christ within the crystalline codes, this leads me into this other point, which was about being saved, the need to be saved. The, uh, saving ourselves and the savior complex and I wanted to talk quickly about this because we've all been under the illusion we've been told that Christ would come back and that we would all be saved um, and many many people have been waiting for this day I know I've had quite a few door knocks in my time from well-meaning beings telling me that if I turn to the Lord turn to the Christ um, renounce my sins and I'll be saved too and you know the day of reckoning is coming blah de, blah de, blah de, blah and you know it's all about how you do this right so you can get saved and I'm like hold on a minute okay if we go back to Noah's Ark story so uh, when I've looked at the chronology of things through Google God and other research, um, the chronology doesn't add up. So Noah's Ark and Atlantis don't seem to match up, but I do believe there's a very strong correlation. And 
What I find really interesting is I didn't even know that unicorns existed in the Bible, but very recently I started to see unicorns again everywhere. And unicorns are mythical creatures, apparently. They don't exist in the physical realm, just like phoenixes, just like dragons don't exist, just like fairies don't exist, etc., etc. right? But unicorns were meant to get on Noah's Ark. And they didn't get on Noah's Ark, apparently. There are different stories I've heard, but one of them was that they got distracted because they were busy playing in pastures nearby with the phoenixes and with the dragons. And this got me thinking, hmm, these mythical creatures, they didn't get saved. Now, the whole getting saved era, which in many ways is represented by Noah's Ark, it was all to do with entering into the patriarchal era, wasn't it? Do what you're told. Be a good being and you will be saved. You will be favoured. You will be spared. And yet these mythical creatures that don't seem to exist in the physical realm yet do exist for those who have their extrasensory perception activated didn't need to be saved. So you can look at humans and say there are those that, that still feel the need to give their power away to others mass populace, don't make a decision themselves, don't, don't trust, trust themselves enough, right? And dare to get it wrong. Dare to, don't trust their inner counsel, their inner authority. And there are those of us who are willing to take the risk, who are willing to go, hold on a minute, that doesn't feel right. Those words and that feeling doesn't add up. I don't trust this being and I don't trust them because something's off and I know it, I trust my inner counsel more. So. In this instance, if you want to activate miracles and magic in your life, you have to reclaim your power. You have to decide that you are saving yourself and you need to let go of the need to save the world. Now, this is going to piss certain people off because there are so many of us caught up in the fight for equality, the fight for um, climate change, the fight for whatever it is that is the big thing that we have to, you know, time's running out and we must do this because if we don't do it, no one else will. And if we go down this belief that, you know, we're all living in a simulated reality of our own creation, and actually, I'm not saying be irresponsible by any way, shape or form, but I'm saying just be aware of what's motivating you. Why do you feel it's up to you to do all of this yourself? And what would happen if you just shifted your vibration? Because if each and every one of us shifted our vibration from fear to love, in an instant, we would have peace on this planet. If each and every one of us shifted our own vibration to responsibility for that, rather than anything else that's further afield, just shifting our own vibration from fear to love, we would have a knock-on effect on everyone else around us. And that is how everything changes in an instant, a tsunami of love. So I just wanted to make this connection because in order to access the miracles, the magic, the non-physical potential, which brings forward that which we want into a reality that doesn't seem to support it presently, we have to suspend disbelief. We have to engage the power of our imagination. We have to stop giving our power away to others. And we need to, again, like stop giving our power away to the mind, to what we think we know and needing to understand everything. If you can do that and you can allow yourself just to claim what it is you want for your own enjoyment. You want to get rid of homelessness for your own enjoyment. Great. You want to um, end all child trafficking for your own enjoyment. Great. You want to um, put an end to animal suffering for your own enjoyment, your own pleasure. Great. But the, the point is, where are we actually coming from in our intention? And I say this as a mother, and that's a whole other story, because um, we have the science today to prove the damage that occurs when we neglect our children, right? When we have super stressful pregnancies, traumatic births, we don't do repair work after the birth, uh, we leave our babies to cry, we put them in routines that suit us, we uh punish them we put them on the naughty step we shame them uh, we do all of these control tactics to get them to conform to the way we think they should be in a broken society we have the science that tells us how damaging that is right and then you have a whole load of people including me who swing the other way and went down this whole natural nurturing you know 
whatever my child needs, I'll give them to him because I'm in so much pain myself from everything that I experienced as a child that I've not been able to heal that I'll put them to my breast the moment that they're crying because I can't bear to hear them cry. And there's all these things that are just so painful about life. So I'll just give them whatever I can in any moment to help them feel better in that moment so that they don't feel pain. So I don't feel pain. And we're caught up in what I call the rebellion of the conditioning. And it's so important if we're going to evolve beyond extremes to find this middle path. Don't get me wrong. This doesn't mean you ignore your children, you leave them to cry, you let them suffer. But when you deal with your own internal suffering before you bring another child into this world, when you deal with your the pain inside of you before you look at procreating and whilst you are in the process of procreating and you are bringing a child up, you keep self-reflecting what's your stuff to deal with so you're not putting it on them. That is how we do a whole load of clearing and healing and addressing the balance so that actually we're not wounded trying to heal the wounded, right? And this is very important at this time because we're all on our way back home. Home is right here. It's in our hearts. The crystalline kingdom is within. (laughs) Um, Paradise, heaven, it's right here. It's all a feeling vibration in this center, which is the center that is well the heart center i don't mean the physical heart but the the energetic center that we call the heart chakra which many will say even the system the chakra system has collapsed into one one actual chakra which is the heart and i just want to invite everyone to open to the possibilities anything i've said today that's kind of blown your mind or got you thinking in a slightly different way is to start to see the world in a different way what would bring me the greatest pleasure to be able to co-create in this world for my own selfish enjoyment. That's going to be really hard for so many of us, but it's very, very important because we get caught up in doing things for others. We get caught up in doing things because it's the right thing to do. It's the good thing to do. And we're just programmed and manipulated and controlled as a result of it. And we're not aware that we're flinging our pain around. And the whole point of the teachings that came about from the time of Atlantis right through to Christ to where we are now is for us to become masters of our reality, masters of our destiny by making the choices that align us with the divine inside of us and therefore to see that divinity in the collective around us. In order to do that, we must bring light to every aspect of our shadow. That doesn't mean calling things out. It means bring light to. It's literally the opposite way in many ways of how we actually deal with things. So I'm going to leave this here. And I I've just wanted to share it because I feel I know when I go to Santorini, there's going to be very specific um, teachings coming through, not necessarily through me, but those who are actually coming along on the retreat. And if it's something that you would like to participate in yourself, if you want to access the master teacher within you, then that is what this is going to be all about. Coming away with an unshakable faith and trust in yourself, not with what you hear here, but in being able to access what is in here as your particular star map, if you like, that gets activated in your energy field, in your creativity studio and through your own enjoyment you get to create something that will bring you so much pleasure to see manifested in this world and you chose this for yourself as a soul before you incarnated this is your piece of the puzzle that you came to activate and to enjoy slotting into place whilst you're here right But the important thing is to stop the whole savior complex to stop the whole i need saving And to it's either I'm trying to save or I need saving. No, neither of those. Come to your midline, okay? And activate within you the joy of creating for the sake of creating, because that is what the divine does. And I know you can hear me. (laughs) So if you want to join me to um, explore how our limited mind gets in the way of us accessing this God self within us. Uh, please do join me on Wednesday, 1 p.m. BST over in the Star Peace Facebook group, where I will be sharing with you the main blockages that come about that keep us stuck in the 3D construct, the matrix of suffering, the matrix of pain, of duality, which has been deconstructed, but it's still so active in our minds that we keep re- reactivating it in our imagination and therefore experiencing it as a reality. Yes, 
It's a financial system that's going through a huge change. All of our systems are going through an upgrade. We're creating the scaffolding of the new earth around us. But if we want to make this fun, we can. Right. We don't have to buy into the fear of all these terrible what ifs of what's going to happen. We can actually create through joy and play what it is that we want to and have a beautiful, graceful and easy transition if we so choose. So if you're liking the sound of that and you want to participate in that game with me, join me on Wednesday. That's when I'll be talking you through the mind stuff that gets in the way and sharing with you a vision of what's truly coming for us as we claim our co-creative powers. Um, and also activating the Christ light within. So if you haven't done that yet, you can check out the video, which was all about the Christ light codes that came through. There was a light language transmission. It's on my YouTube channel and it's also in the Star Peace Facebook group. And for now, I'm just going to bid you all a farewell. And I look forward to your comments. I look forward to your insights. Just remember to enjoy the exploration and remember that we came here to enjoy co-creating our reality, not enduring some form of suffering that we think is what we have to just put up with for the rest of. That's not our truth if we choose not to accept it. And <laughs> it's a bit like Mission Impossible. Your mission, if you choose to accept it, is to have, have as much fun as possible co-creating your version of reality that you would like to, your personal paradise and a collective paradise as a result through grace and ease, joy, peace and play. I love you. You are amazing. Let's all do this together and I'll see you on Wednesday. If you want to know more about the retreat, please get in touch. Just drop me a message and I'll send you all the details. It's the 1st to the 6th of May and it's going to be epic. Bye for now.